Hello everybody, welcome back to another EWA video. Today I'll be discussing the Electoral College uh, vote in the Senate, or really the, the Senate, or the Congress, counting the Electoral College votes on uh, Wednesday, which by the time of this video releasing should be tomorrow. And yeah, I'll be discussing it and talking about uh, the Republican uh, Republican attempt, or these, uh, as Politico states, 12 GOP senators who are challenging Biden's win. So, this movement is led by Ted Cruz, as stated in the article, and what the plan is to ha is to bring up a motion in the Congress while during the vote to essentially, I believe, um, have an audit, you know, occur. And uh, the, the way this works is that um, a senator and a representative must both both uh, partner um, together and to raise an objection. So, for example, Josh Hawley and up to I believe um, 140 other House reps have um, stated that they will challenge the election results, and separate from this are another um, 11 senators, including Ted Cruz, and I believe uh, it mentions more of them earlier, uh, later actually. Uh, yes, uh, Marsha Blackburn, Mike Ron, Steve Daines, Ron Johnson, John Kennedy, and James Langford. And some, are, some of these are actually senator elects, or actually this time they are now senators since uh, all Congress people were sworn in yesterday on Sunday. So Bill Haggerty, Cynthia Loomis, uh, Roger Marshall, and Tommy Tuberville. So what these, they're trying to do is bring up a vote, and I believe I believe it'll be in the House and then the Senate. And um, honestly, I do not believe it'll work. I think that in a you know, majority Democratic Senate, um, sorry, House, there is really no way it could work at all because I don't think that any Democrats would vote for it. And they wouldn't be enough to have a majority. So, yeah. And also, I think that there are actually a lot of Republicans. He mentions Lisa Murkowski, Mitt Romney, and Pat Toomey. Uh, three, and I believe also Senate Majority Whip John Thune, who I don't, know, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but you can tell me if I am in the comment section down below. And Mitch McConnell have all stated that this is not, or they have stated their support, against, or sorry, their opposition to it. And if you have that in the Senate, that would be 53 to, um, f uh, 53, uh, to 40, sorry, 53 to 47. So that would mean the motion fails. And also, uh, Tom Cotton recently just said, uh, very, very recently, I believe in today, said that he would not vote for it and does not support it, which would mean actually 54 to 46, and that is not counting any other senators who have not made a public statement. And I also would suspect that Suzanne Collins would not vote for it. I believe some other senators and maybe, um, you know, more moderate states. So yes, Suzanne Collins may bring up to number to at least 55. But um, I also think that in on the subject of people who have acknowledged Joe Biden's win, I think uh, people such as, you know, the ones who have acknowledged, but yeah, again, not acknowledged Biden's win, they do not, I don't think, do not think that many, that any of them really will um, vote for this Proposal. So this, you know, I've, uh, it includes um, Marco Rubio, Ben Sass, and I already mentioned Lisa Murkowski, I believe, but maybe even Shelley Moore Capito. These are all senators. There's also there are also House representatives. So you know, you have Jim Durkin, Liz Cheney, Don, and Don Young. So yes, um, for example, the House leader Jim Durkin for the GOP, he could certainly be. Um, and that could, he could certainly lead a lot of Republicans to vote against that if he is actually uh, in, is in opposition to this movement. That's because, but just because the Republican acknowledged Biden's win doesn't mean they are automatically against us. So we'll clear that up. Um, so uh, what I'm also going to talk about is the attempt in 2004. So if we go back to 2004, we can see something very similar to this actually that uh, happened. And it was kind of, it was actually very, very, actually very similar to this in a way. So let's go back to 2004. So in 2004, um, uh, it was the you know the presidential election between John Kerry and George uh, W. Bush. So the state of Ohio, well, a uh, very interesting state, of course, you need 20 electoral votes, and it was essentially the state that could have decided the election. If John Kerry had won it, as you will see here, he would have won a narrow five uh, electoral vote majority, and I believe maybe even more, because uh, one faithless elector voted for his vice president. So about a 5-6 um, electoral vote victory. That would make him the next president. And if you want to see how the 2008 election would go, then you can click up here um, to see it. 
I already made a video about that, and it's pretty interesting, so I hope you all check it out. But anyway, uh, back to the subject at hand. There were a lot of reports of, um, you know, uh, let's to uh, Wikipedia states, alleged misallocation of voting machines and disproportionately long waits in predominantly African-American communities. Uh, in addition, there were, you know, um, disqualification provi provisional ballots, and the, all of these came under the category of uh, irregularities in voting, which would usually, um, in most of these, uh, what's the word, uh, require a recount afterwards. But um, there are some, you know, obviously a lot of people thought there's some shady stuff happening, but John Kerry conceded the race in Ohio, which therefore made him lose the election. But on January 6, 2005, so uh, about 16 years ago, by uh, in two days, as a matter of fact, Senator Barbara Boxer of California joined Representative St uh, Stephanie Tubbs uh, Jones of, of Ohio, that state, to um, they were filed what was called a congressional objection to the certification of Ohio's electoral college votes, and they stated these irregularities as their reason for doing such thing, and it was voted down 74 to 1 in the Senate and 267 to 31 in the House of Representatives. This is actually the second time in American history, uh, the first time being in 1877, as stated down here. So, um, and there was an objection to a single, uh, to a faithless selector in 1969, but that's not important, right? That is not very important. But anyway, yeah, this, this did happen, to, this did happen, and it did not, and it all failed. It definitely, as you, as you know, George W. Bush was re-elected, and the election turned out like so. But, uh, this, bring, this bring me, brings me back to will this work, and as you saw before, it is unlikely to work. So Senator Barbara Boxer actually um, was interviewed because it's pretty, uh, you know, some more things happening. She was interviewed. So, um, yeah, she claimed that it was much, much different. And uh, as you can see, this is a pretty old article, article because uh, well, it's only about a few days old. But yes, December 27th. So it was technically last year, interestingly enough. But still, she mentioned that it was different. She said, I mean, she uh, said that this and this is a quote, the circumstances are totally different this year when uh, Trump and his allies are seeking to overturn national election result. So, um, it, it isn't really fair. I can't say that she's wrong, or sorry, she's right and the other side is wrong, or vice, vice versa, because of course both sides think they are right. That's fine. And frankly, I don't think this will change anything. If you look at the 2020 map as the results, um, the Republicans would need to, to overturn about 38 electoral votes. For example, that would be like, you know, they need Georgia, maybe Wisconsin, maybe even Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania, and that would just get them narrowly a victory. That would and very narrow victory. But there are of course many ways to do such a thing. But it'd be very difficult. And especially with the amount of um uh, Republican senators and like the House members who are, are likely to vote against this, I highly doubt this will succeed. And I highly doubt it will change anything. I mean, there I have it, you know, there you have it. I think, it's, you know, it's kind of harsh thing to say, but frankly, I don't think that they will be able to get anywhere with this attempt, and I don't think that this will uh, come to anything, and I think that Joe Biden will be pre uh, inaugurated as president in, on January 21st, or 20th, I don't remember which one. But there we have it, everyone. I hope this uh, explained a few things. If you're confused about how this system works, it is pretty confusing. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below, leaving telling me your thoughts, video suggestions, how I did, all that. Like the video so more people can see it. It really helps me out, and it would really mean a lot if you subscribe and hit the notification bell so another so you'll be instantly notified when more videos come out. Um, I believe I will be having in some election nights coming out soon, so hit them again if you hit the notification bell, you get instantly notified so you can watch them immediately. So everyone, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.